in the lawless heartland of the Wild West, where bullets spoke louder than words and outlaws reigned supreme, one name echoed through the canyons and haunted the dreams of the righteous, Jesse James, the notorious rebel whose legend still lingers in the dust of history. Today we will talk about Jesse James, the outlaw's last ride and mysterious death. The Wild West is well known for the legendary figures that inhabited it, as well as the stories they told of anarchy, adventure, and violence. Jesse James is one such figure who stands out as someone who exemplifies the outlaw archetype. Jesse James was born in 1847 in Clay County, Missouri, and grew up during a turbulent time in the history of the United States. This time period was typified by the Civil War and the fights between Union and Confederate sympathizers. Jesse James became one of the most talked about, complicated, and undoubtedly beloved individuals of the Wild West era despite the fact that he utilized aggressive tactics and had a propensity for illegal behavior. This film will dig into the lives and times of Jesse James, analyzing how he came to be synonymous with the phrase Wild West and how he became the focal point for the numerous outlaws that followed in his footsteps. Early years and background with the family. Jesse Woodson James was born to parents Reverend Robert S. James and Zerelda Cole James. Jesse's middle name refers to his grandfather, Jesse Woodson James. Clay County, Missouri, sometimes known as Little Dixie due to its population of Southern transplants and its ties to the Confederacy, was the home of the Scottish and English ancestors of the James family. The James family lived in Clay County, Missouri. Jesse was the middle child of four in his family, which also included an elder brother named Frank, a younger brother named Robert Jr., and a sister named Susan Lavina. The James family farmed hemp on a commercial scale and raised sheep on the farm that they owned and operated near Centerville, Missouri. The farm consisted of 100 acres. The fact that the family owned enslaved people is evidence of their commitment to the institution of slavery, which played a significant role in a great deal of the region's economic activity at the time. Reverend Robert James, Jesse's father, was a prosperous hemp farmer and a Baptist minister who had traveled to Missouri to assist in the establishment of William Jewell College in Liberty. Jesse was named after his father. Tragic events and unstable conditions. Jesse's father, Robert James, gave in to the pull of the California Gold Rush and moved the family west to California in the year 1850, which threw the young Jesse's life into disarray and made it difficult for him to find a sense of stability. Unfortunately, cholera took its toll on him, and he passed away not long after landing in California, leaving his family without a father. After the passing of Jesse's father, Robert, Zerelda remarried twice, first to Benjamin Sims and then to Dr. Archie Reuben Samuel. Jesse is the child of the second marriage. Both of these marriages were brief and ended in divorce or death. Jesse was able to keep his close relationship with his mother and establish a strong work ethic while working on the family farm in spite of the disruptions that occurred in his family life. He was noted for his solitary nature, thoughtfulness, and fierce guarding of his mother and other loved ones. Frank, Jesse's brother, had a profound love for literature, particularly the Bible, and the family anticipated that he would pursue higher education. However, the advent of the Civil War in the United States made it impossible for them to pursue their academic goals as planned. The Civil War, as well as the decision to join the Confederacy. During the time of the Civil War, Missouri was a border state and it was subject to significant tensions between Union and Confederate sympathizers. In May of 1861, Jesse James' older brother Frank enlisted in the Missouri State Guard, making him a recognized Confederate soldier. Jesse James was born in 1835. He fought in several engagements, including the Battle of Wilson's Creek and the First Battle of Lexington. Jesse remained devoted to his family and helped out on the farm despite the fact that he was initially too young to participate in the conflict. Despite this, he yearned for action and ultimately joined his brother in supporting the cause of the Confederacy. Jesse's spirit of defiance became stronger when he suffered experiences that were dangerously close to ending his life and observed the brutality of Union militias. He joined Quantrell's Raiders, a famed Confederate guerrilla band led by William Clark Quantrill in 1864 when he was only 16 years old. Quantrill's Raiders and the Reign of Terror 
Jesse James, accompanied by Quantrell's raiders, undertook a string of raids and other acts of guerrilla warfare across the state of Missouri and the territory that bordered Kansas. The guerrilla band, which was notorious for its cruel methods and merciless reputation, carried out several raids, ambushes, and acts of violence against Union soldiers, sympathizers, and civilians. They were known for their brutal tactics. Jesse James and his fellow raiders earned a reputation as some of the region's most fearsome and dangerous combatants while they were under Quantrill's leadership. This was due to the fact that they struck dread into the hearts of their adversaries. During this time, Jesse James became known for his superb horsemanship, marksmanship, and tactical skills. He also had a reputation for being a fierce gunfighter. He became famous for his audacious escapes, during which he successfully evaded capture by Union forces on multiple occasions. Jesse's mental health suffered as a result of the violence and murder, and he saw the deaths of a great number of close friends and comrades while they were on the raids. Outlaw Activity Following the American Civil War In the years following the conclusion of the American Civil War in 1865, Jesse James and his brother Frank found themselves on the wrong side of the law. They were no longer seen as members of the Confederate Army fighting for their cause. Rather, they were considered outlaws. The James Younger Gang was a criminal organization that specialized in stealing banks, railways, and stagecoaches. The James brothers and other former members of Quantrill's Raiders established the James Younger Gang. Their heists were precisely organized, and they frequently took property that represented the riches and might of the Union. The gang would launch their attack with lightning speed, easily taking control of the security personnel and the passengers, and escaping with significant quantities of money. Their daring deeds captivated the imagination of the general people, and the media sensationalized their antics, which contributed to the perpetuation of their image as legendary criminals. During their existence as criminals, the James Younger Gang was involved in several altercations with members of the law enforcement community and Pinkerton agents. They evaded capture by engaging in gun battles and attempting dangerous escapes, leaving a wake of bloodshed in their wake. The gang's operations took place throughout multiple states, including Missouri, Kentucky, Iowa, Texas, and Minnesota. The afterlife and its impact. The infamous Northfield raid took place on April 3, 1882, and it was the incident that eventually brought an end to the reign of the James Younger Gang. The gang encountered opposition from the citizens of Northfield, Minnesota, and the police enforcement officers in the area when they attempted to rob the First National Bank of Northfield. The subsequent gunfight led to the murders of two members of the rival gang, and it also led to the arrest of the Younger Brothers. On the other hand, Jesse James was able to evade capture during the operation but remained a fugitive for the rest of his life. On April 3, 1882, a member of his own gang named Robert Ford, who was after the reward money offered for James's capture, shot him to death, which ultimately led to his death. Jesse James's passing signaled the end of an era and cemented his position as a famous outlaw in the United States. In spite of the fact that Jesse James engaged in illegal activity, he captured the American public's imagination. In the view of many, he rose to the status of a folk hero and became a symbol of defiance against the established order. His narrative has been romanticized and represented in various books, movies, and other forms of popular culture throughout the years. That's all for today. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. See you next time.